Hi everybody, how are you? Hope you're well. Uh, this week I'm braving the elements and going hatless and also we're looking at something vintage. Notice how I use the term vintage and not old. That's because this guitar and me, we're actually the same age. This is my 1981 Gibson Les Paul Custom. Okay, this is my 40 year old Gibson Les Paul Custom. Me and this guitar, we've been on some travels, we've been on some gigs, and we both celebrate our 40th birthday this year. Uh, I've owned it since the late 90s, which I'll discuss a bit more in a little while. Uh, spec wise though, it's everything you'd expect. Uh, three piece maple top, mahogany back, um, maple neck, ebony fingerboard, the binding I've always really liked on this, the binding that goes around the edges, although it's gone quite yellow over the years, uh, I still think it looks really nice, even though, like I say, it has aged. The color is Tobacco Burst, which for a limited time, what they used to do is they used to run the color, not only on the front, but on the back as well, which I think looks really nice. You used to have got the neck as well, but I kind of made some changes there, which I'll talk about in a bit, and sort of runs through to the headstock too. The neck is really wide. It's a quite hard neck to play on, on this one. Um, but it wasn't until I got it home that I looked at the, um, I was looking at those tuning pegs and I thought, they look sort of slightly, I'll try and get on the close-ups, but they look sort of slightly uh, uneven, like there's a, a little notch this side that makes it wider than the other side. So I was looking and then all of a sudden, I didn't realize until I pulled it out that Gibson's greatest invention ever is right there, the built-in string winder, uh, which they put on a lot of uh, very late 70s, very early 80s customs for a very limited time. And I don't know why they didn't continue with it because the amount of times that's really sort of helped me out not having to grab for the string winder and quickly being able to put a string on. Um, so yeah, built-in string winders in every single one is one of the best things Gibson ever did. Wish they'd bring it back, that would be great. Uh, in terms of weight, this is quite a heavy guitar. Um, but it's a Les Paul, isn't it? And uh, still sounds really good and I still love it. <laughs> So there I was, uh, late 90s, hadn't been doing the Marshall gig very long, probably a year or two, and I was doing a clinic at Musical Exchanges in Birmingham. Don't know if you guys remember that shop, but it was like the most amazing shop, it really was. Uh, for a little while, when they when they opened the downstairs bit, you used to go downstairs all the way to the back to the right-hand side, and they'd have a little area at the back which was all vintage and rare stuff. And I remember going and saying to the guys, have you got any lefties? You know, that old line. Uh, and they were like, no, I don't think so. Um, 
So I walked in to this little vintage and rare bit at the back and in there, this guitar was hanging there. And I, I was like, what the hell is this? You know, so um, I spoke to them. They're like, yeah, I didn't really know much about it. I don't think they'd had it in very long. They then told me it was a 1981 when they had a look at the serial number. I thought, well, you know, my favorite type of guitar uh, made the same year that I was born. It's got to come over me really. So it did and I've used it. Uh, I use it for years and years and years. Uh, on all the live stuff, a lot of recording stuff as well. Um, yeah, it was sort of like my go-to guitar for a long, long time. In terms of what I changed, I think I changed the pickups out a couple of times, although I could be wrong. Um, this has now got bare knuckle nail bombs in. And this was really also the very first guitar that I put bare knuckles in and thus began my relationship with those good folk there. Uh, because I think it was from just being at the guitar shows, that's how I met Tim. and. Um, and I, you know, I think again, it was a recommendation thing. He said, you should, you know, if you want to try our stuff, put a nail bomb in. It was just a bridge section originally. I kept the original in there. Although that was a, a bit of a weird thing because I wasn't ever sure if the original pickups in this were actually original, if you see what I mean, because they were what were called T-top, Gibson T-top pickups, which they were apparently stopped producing in like 1980. So it could have been one of the very last uh like iterations of the t-top pickup that they use and then put in the 80 some of the 81 models i don't know um so yeah i kept the original neck pickup um and then changed the bridge pickup to this nail bomb with the camo cover and then about maybe five years later or something like that i remember being down that neck of the woods and popped in and they put one in the neck position as well they are very quite high output good for the good for the hard stuff but the nice thing about the nail bombs is that they don't like they still have tone to them you know what i mean like there's a lot of high gainy pickups which when you wind the, the the game back or whatever there's sort of no character to them but these really do and i hope that's sort of coming across in some of the clips that i've put together for today because they sound honestly tonally they sound great quite dark which suit the suit the tone of the of the of the guitar as well you know the other main thing that i did was um and I'm going to blame Zach Wilde for this. <laughs> uh, not that he knows that I've done it. Although he might, I don't know. Um, is that I change, I, I, you know, Zach's always had this thing about taking the, the lacquer off the back of the, the neck. So after I'd owned it probably for about five or six years, I took it to a guy who, who stripped the neck. And he did an amazing job. And um, even now, that's still really nice to play. Because of the width of the neck, like I said, it was quite a you know, quite a struggle to when you get going with it. Uh, I just sort of hoped that when I had the lacquer taken off the back of the neck, it'd be a little bit smoother to get around. And it was, you know, you haven't sort of got that stiffness on the back. I know, obviously, by doing that, I devalued it by a considerable amount of money. Um, I had a look, actually, before uh, I started this video to see what was out there in terms of other lefty Gibson Les Pauls from 1981. And there's quite a few. I found, I think a Heritage and Sunburst. I found a black, um, I found a black custom. And then I actually found a, uh, one of these, exactly the same as this, a Tobacco Burst 1981 lefty Gibson Les Paul custom, exactly the same as this. Um, the one that I found though has got the scratch plate. This one never had the scratch plate, nor did it have the original case. Um, and that one obviously has still got the lacquer on the back of the neck and is in far better condition. Uh, but yeah, it's been nice actually playing it today. I haven't played it in quite some time. I had a bit of a problem when I got it out with the a little bit of a buzz on the A. You hear that? Uh, yeah, so that's gonna need a little more attention, I think. But um, yeah, in general terms, obviously it has aged better than I have and still sounds great. <laughs>
Okay, just before we go, a uh, couple of things, as always. Um, I've had a few questions about something I made reference to at the very end of the last video uh, when I said there's some new stuff coming. Um, what does it mean? Well, if you go back to the very first video that I did, um, I said ideally where I want to be with all these videos is getting other guitar brands on board. It's all very well looking through all my guitars and I've tried to keep a, a lot of the more relevant and ones that are still available in the videos. But um, what would be nice really is to show what's out there currently for lefties from various brands. So it's happening and there's been some brands got on board already. Uh, so I'm just waiting for uh, the stuff to come through. Uh, there'll be some guitars that have been available for a while. There'll also be uh, like some exclusive first looks one one in particular one brand in particular it will be like probably the first look at their 2021 lefty model which will be quite nice or models who knows um yeah and other than that you know sort of just trying to broaden this whole thing out rather than just be about guitar demos you know trying to get other people involved as well as you've seen with the interviews talking to people about their lives just general work and musos really um people I've worked with, a lot of friends, that sort of thing. And soon also I'm going to be putting some little performance bits up as well that I'm doing with some singers that I know just to, um, yeah, just for a bit more variation on here, which will be nice. So yeah, so there you go. Um, and lastly, this week's uh, recommended listening as an album. While I've got this guitar out, it made perfect sense. Uh, I've already mentioned his name once already. He is the reason that I devalued this uh, 40 year old Gibson Les Paul. It's an album by Zach Wilde from 1994. The album is Pride and Glory. The band were Pride and Glory. And uh, yeah, it's just the most brilliant album that's got that sort of Southern feel to the whole thing. I grew up literally going to school, listening to this album every single day. Um, and I absolutely love it. Still love it. This is before the Black Label Society stuff. And his playing was, is, is unbelievable on there. Um, his singing is great. The, the whole album has got a very sort of live feel to it. Um, James Lomenzo on bass, Brian Titchy on drums, uh, and great songs. And just, yeah, oh my God, the playing was just, is, is still so inspirational. So uh, go check it out. Um, and if you're talking about Zach from that era as well, then uh, Book of Shadows and also No More Tears with Ozzy. Amazing albums, all of them. Uh, that's it for this week. Hope you've had fun and I will see you on the next one.